but one thing that I thought was really interesting, and Amelia, it kind of follows on from your paper, um, thinking about um, this idea of protest, the protest series was something you can put that it on you were, um, <laughs> you know, the, your, your series was labelled as, and um, I think all of you brought up this, this idea of the oppositional politics and potentials um, of the photographic image. And Amelia, I just thought, could you pick up on that idea of, of, of photograph as protest for mm. us? Um, photograph as protest. So I, uh, when I interviewed um, Pereira um, and mentioned, uh, you know, whether they could be read as a perhaps uh, response to the ongoing civil war, because it had just literally ended by the time I, uh, met her. <laughs> uh, she was very sort of cagey about the whole affair, so she didn't want to necessarily read this, read these as a um, as a sign of protest in that case. But mm. I find it quite interesting that they emerge at this particular moment mm. and how she is thinking about bringing into the studio a figure like Carly, who is, you know, yeah. still a disruptive force. And, uh, and a Hindu day. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as claiming that Carly is a Hindu deity because the issue is very complicated. She's not a Hindu deity, but like, uh, you know, uh, very uh, revered in India, especially Calcutta, northern, northern India. Uh, but that connection that she makes is very pertinent, I mm. think, and that's where the element of protest comes through. And Peria is also perhaps the second generation of women artists who have been able to attend art schools. So it's uh, very much the beginning of a, of a long mm -hmm. journey. So mm. for women in Sri Lanka, it's quite new, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. No, no, that sort of that sense of the photo book as, as a site of protest, because I was really interested in those juxtapositions you made with, um, from sketch to snapshot, and the kind of, again, the, the potential of um, the photograph to disturb mm -hmm. these sites of tourism, you know, not as sites of abandon and freedom, but the words from Pollard are unease and, and dread, so I don't know if that was something that is kind of a, a thread here that's forming. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I think absolutely. I mean, I think the idea of, the, as Angela was saying, the way that photography can reuse the vernacular um, was really important to mm -hmm. artists like Pollard, um, Kempere, Joy Gregory, partly also because they're working as activists in London with you know, different community groups using photography in different ways. So there's that um, sort of way that the vernacular disrupts certain narratives around photography, um, and I think also by um, manipulating photography in this way as a way in which these fe this, this affect um, that uh, Professor Need you talked about so beautifully, but you know, trying to, trying to create this sense mm. of affect, um, yeah. or at least bring it to the surface. Absolutely. I think that that's one thing I would just say with this idea of the oppositional with someone like Pollard, is I think it, it is, but it, in the past, the oppositionality of this generation of 80s black arts artists has often meant that they get sidelined from discussions about them as British artists. So I think there's a, we're at a moment where we can look back now at that oppositionality and, and talk about it in, in different ways. I think mm. that's important to, to mm. highlight. Yeah, I think you talked about the inner and the outer histories and, and not right. having those as separate categories, right. but as doing this yeah. complicated mm. work of bringing those together. Yeah. I think, oh, uh, can I just sorry. add one thing? For, for the protest, I think an element that's really crucial is that of parody and irony, because it's a very sort of tongue-in-cheek mm. project, and mm -hmm. I think she really um, is thinking about, you know, the political potential of irony um, in, in the case of like studio crazy. photography. So, um, so that's where, yeah, protest comes through, I suppose, mm. through laughter. <laughs> And activism for you is an important word, Matilde. Oh, yeah, I think it doesn't really appear in the, in the archive that I'm working on at the moment because um, what I think we need to understand the CDP archive as framed by um, this discourse, well, this oppositional discourse, which the teams developed really, really strongly, but the photographers themselves in that particular project uh, were not 
really taken on board, really, um, uh, to have that, that space, in fact. Um, so I think you need to regard these photographs as only liminally um, a position, or, and as was suggested, um, other collectives in the 1970s were far more um, politically radical, if you think of uh, um, well, the project you were mentioning, but also the Hackney Fleshers, or, um, or community politics, which really developed a very radical um, um, form of, of, of photographic practice. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any other questions or comments for this incredible set of papers uh, together? Well, <laughs> I know the martinis are calling, and uh, but um, I'd like to thank this panel because I think we've addressed so many um, important questions that have been running throughout the conference and you, you did a sort of formidable task actually to address some of the kind of these very deep seated and and um, questions that really you know we need to address here. So thank you very much. So if you join me in thanking uh, our <laughs>
guess this is an impromptu uh, comment based on uh, the last two days of, of talks. But I think as someone who's located in an archive, you know, the, and um, hearing a lot of these talks that come out of archives, I'm always struck at what's not in the archive and what's missing and um, how much has been really um, subjective in terms of how these institutions' archives have grown and, and developed, and oftentimes in very ad hoc ways and very um, unconscious ways, really. And so I'm, I'm very keen to think about, you know, sort of moving forward, even as we're thinking now and talking about this kind of contested moment in um, talking about photography, talking about the archive, what are we thinking about in terms of collecting for future future generations? Are we thinking about that? Um, you know, I know Ego uh, has talked about, you know, sort of archival therapy and, and moving in between these, these, these silent voices that, that are just not represented in the archive. So I'm always thinking about sort of who's not there. And, you know, um, I, I, I hope this, this sparks some ideas and, and conversation and coming up in the future about um, sort of where we go in terms of our own collecting practices and thinking about the history of photography because it's been a very narrow field. I'm always very excited to come and realize, okay, people are actually starting to think beyond the monographic now and beyond the few white men that have been sort of lauded as, as the history of photography. So, so that's very encouraging. And I think, um, and also the conversations, um, perhaps out of the, the sessions, have revolved around where we study photography yeah. and the history of photography and how we study it and I think Simon raised this in his talk as well um, about different collections but also research resources and so many of the um, talks brought up digital resources and how we're accessing images and photo archives and I think that's an incredibly important part of this discussion which perhaps we didn't address head on in detail but was definitely circulating through and around a lot of the talks and these um, huge new data sets of images and, and actually the methodological challenges and issues and problems and potential uh, that are raised by this kind of access to, yeah. for, uh, to imagery and as well developing collections about the research and the incredible critical literature that's been developed and which we have benefited from and heard about um, over the last two days. So I've been really struck by the liveliness of this debate. Um, and also, as with all uh, conferences at the Yale Centre for British Art, um, the incredible energy in the breakout sessions. Just that moment where you go in often a bit more intimate groups, I think, and look at things together and share ideas. And um, for, uh, in both of the sessions I attended um, across those two days, we, we connected to the bigger themes at the conference but also had these very particular discussions around bodies of work. So I really enjoyed that moving between different registers of the close looking um, in collections and then trying to put these within context and frameworks of you know, these monolithic <laughs> ideas and categories of Britishness and photography. I, could I just, um, I guess I've been thinking about um, our collaboration and, um, and how, um, with John, who's um, kind of parachuted in, in a way, um, into what was, you know, started out as a collaboration between um, the Paul Mellon Centre and the Yale Centre for British Art, who collaborate together all the time. We're kind of related to each other. And then bringing in the Huntington, um, and, and how that's, you know, I, I mean, it's resulted in many unexpected things for me in terms of thinking about what we do here at this institution and other institutions we work with. Um, we've thought about, um, as John said, many different forms of photography, and as Chitra said, um, and um, many different kinds of photographers, um, and many different kinds of scholars or commentators. We've had practitioners, um, and, and people who are not necessarily historians of photography. Um, so it's been um, interesting on many different levels, um, both in terms of the kind of content that was presented and also just in talking with people who've been here um, and who've you know what they've been taking out of this conference um, and that's been very varied too and I think um, seeing um, both um, potentials for enriching certain areas because of the different perspectives that are being brought but also noticing that there are some real lacunas and gaps 
and um, and that um, and that maybe bringing it all together in some ways is um, is um, is challenging. Um, and um, I was really struck by the by the way that um, you know, we didn't say this in our call for papers. We didn't use the word documentary, for instance. Um, it was very open-ended, um, but I think it's interesting that, um, that a real emphasis of this conference has been on talking about the documentary and talking about the more the ephemeral, the album, and the different containers, in a way, of photography. Um, and um, so I, what I'm sort of taking away from this is just thinking about, um, and also um, Simon made a kind of a rallying cry for what, what he, I think, called a kind of a crisis of what's happening in the UK in terms of institutional support for photography and for archives. Um, and it just, you know, it's made me think about um, how we're going to take the conversation forward as institutions that support British art. I feel it was really a worthwhile effort to signal um, our interest in this diverse multiplicity, multivalence of, um, of photography um, and bringing these conversations together. Um, wanting to sort of take that thought process forward um, in terms of exhibitions and thinking about some of the opportunities that might be there for us to fill some of those lacuna that have been flushed out by these conversations. Um, so I'm really um, grateful to you know, everybody who's been involved in, in putting the program together um, and being open to this really diverse um, way of thinking about photography. Um, and just grateful for all the conversations that we've had over these two days, which have um, been really enlightening for me in terms of thinking about photography in a, in a much more complex way than I had before. Um, so I want to thank you all. I think Mark, um, who's at the Paul Mellon Center and um, had another comment to make, so I want to, you know, if there are other institutional voices that want to be heard, I know Amy hasn't had a chance to say anything, um, maybe this might be the moment. Yes, I was, I was going to ask a question about uh, photography, but I think I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong time to we'll ask. That. No, 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 no. We've, just, we've had two days of doing that. But I'm sure I want, what I want to do, and I think as you prompt, prop, rightly prompted us to do, um, maybe I can do it on, on both our behalves, Amy, uh, and, but Amy might well want to say a word as well, is just to, to, thank, uh, to thank all the organisers on behalf of all of us who've attended this uh, event. Uh, to thank um, yeah, our colleagues from the Huntingdon, Sarah, Martina, John. I think all of us uh, have, uh, have uh, reveled in this, as you said, incredibly rich combination of talks and then breakout sessions, which does seem to work so brilliantly in, uh, in, um, in making up an event like this. And I've also heard and wanted to express our thanks to the practitioners of course, Martin himself, but also the three practitioners who spoke at lunchtime, because I have heard a lot of feedback about how uh, welcome and interesting that session uh, was. And I guess that leads into the question I was going to ask about, the, about uh, uh, the event and about the ways in which we want to take things forward, because it was fascinating that all the four practitioners that we listened to presented their, work, their photographs of individual works um, uh, to be looked at and to be considered carefully. Whereas, in fact, as you said, Martina, so many of the papers that we've had and the discussions we've had have been about photography, which is the photographic image embedded in, in broader contexts, uh, whether it's the album, the newspaper, or the archive. And I guess the interesting challenge for us in the future is to think about the ways in which the individual photographic image, as presented by the four practitioners that we've been listening to, uh, can enjoy the very sustained, close looking in and of itself that we typ typically grant other forms of art or other forms of visual image, and or whether in fact that's an, an, an inappropriate or an anachronistic way of looking at the photographic image. But I do worry that sometimes we are too quick to move away from the photographic image into its contextual uh, apparatus, mm -hmm. and maybe too quick to move away from uh, its inherent complexity and interest mm -hmm. as an image. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, a provocation, I guess. <laughs> but uh, that's, the that's only within, yeah. within the context of a huge amount of thanks to all the organisers. And also to tell everyone that we're already starting to plan next year's event, which will be taking place at the Paul Mellon Centre itself. But yet we haven't quite got a, a subject, but we've got a, a, a very, very hard act to follow, I can tell you that. So <laughs> it's going to be a real challenge for us too. But Amy, did you want to say a word or two? Um, as some of you know, I've had a long and deep um, and abiding interest in the subject of photography, um, having written my first book with Alan Trachtenberg here, on, um, which was an anthology of so-called classic essays on photography. So there couldn't have been anything more 
apt as a set of conversations than those that I think you have had over the course of the last two days um, for me as um, the director of this institution as we begin really to strategize um, our own position toward the collecting of photography. We are one of those archives, Jenny, I think, that one could say um, has amassed photograph photographs in very different forms, very different kinds of photographs, um, without a plan. And thinking about our collection, um, as we think back on the conversations that we've had over the last two days, um, as it exists now, and thinking about how to take it forward into the future with the projects, of course, that are attended to that development, um, could not be a richer or a more um, really important um, undertaking. So I'm immensely grateful um, for that uh, very rich set of conversations that we've had across so many different communities that so many of our um, speakers represent. So I thank all of you um, in the way in which you've helped this institution really to think about how we would like to position ourselves um, as a collecting institution, as an institution that promotes teaching and research and that invites scholars here to utilize our collections um, in much broader dialogues and conversations internationally. So I'm really, really grateful to you all for a magnificent um, last two days, a provocative and interesting and important last two days. Thank you, Amy. And so this is um, hopefully the beginning of many more conversations, and I think it has prompted us to think about things that we need to do um, into the future. So thank you all very, very much.